everybody, it's Kristen here from Magoosh, and today in this episode of Tuesday CT, we are going to talk about some more trig basics, namely the unit circle. So if you haven't already checked out our first trig basics video on sine, cosine, and tangent, I suggest you start with that one, but if you are ready to jump ahead and talk about the unit circle, well, I am glad you are here because this is a very important thing to know for the test. So here is the unit circle. It's very lovely. It is a circle with a radius of one that we typically graph on the coordinate plane around the origin. Okay, so there are a few things that you need to know about the unit circle that are gonna help you out so much on the ACT. The first is that one convenient thing that the unit circle allows us to think about are angles that are greater than 360 degrees. We can just keep going around and around and around the unit circle. So, a circle has 360 degrees, but you'll often see a question on the test that says where, in which quadrant, for example, does the angle of 760 lie? So in order to do that, you can just keep going around the unit circle until you spin the dial and get it to land where it's supposed to land. So we go around 360 and then 360 again, that would get us to 720. And so that means that that angle I'm talking about would be somewhere in this quadrant. So that's one thing that's important to know. Let's talk about a few more other things that are important to know. All right, now my unit circle has gotten a little more complicated, but we're gonna talk about all these elements here. So often we are drawing right triangles from the origin in the unit circle because it's really convenient to have that hypotenuse of one when we're talking about figuring out certain trig functions. So looks like bow tie, you can draw right triangles from the origin in each of the four, what are called, quadrants. So we number our quadrants counterclockwise. This is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So the test usually doesn't refer to quadrants using those numbers, but it's useful. It's useful to think about that in trig in general, so you should know that. Now, because, let's, let's look at this angle right here in quadrant one. So we're looking at this angle right here. So remember Sokotoa, right? So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, because our hypotenuse is one in the unit circle, it's really just the adjacent side over one, or just the cosine actually equals the adjacent side. So that's why I've labeled along the x-axis here cosine. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which if our hypotenuse is one, is really the sine of this particular triangle equals the opposite side. So I've labeled the y side the sine, and you could project that onto the y-axis here as well if you wanted to. Okay, so that's really important to know. The next thing that's important to know are radians. So typically the unit circle is referred to in radians. So if you haven't discussed converting degrees to radians in math class, or if you need a refresher on that, I suggest you do that first. But just a quick, quick, the gist here is that in order to convert degrees to radians, we multiply by pi over 180. So 90 degrees is pi over two, 180 degrees is pi, 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2, and 360 degrees is 2 pi. If nothing else, just memorize these things, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. It's really going to help you for the test question we're going to look at soon. All right, still with me? Next thing that is important to know is where are sine and cosine of angles positive or, and tangent, positive or negative. Now, if we look at quadrant two here, I can tell you right now that in quadrant two, sine is positive and cosine and tangent are negative. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because of my knowledge about the x and y axis here and how that affects positive and negative things. So the sign here is positive because we're above the x-axis and the sign is opposite over hypotenuse, so our opposite side is positive. Cosine here is negative because cosine has to do with the x-axis, with the bottom, because we're talking about adjacent over hypotenuse, and that would be negative. So you can use that to figure out positive and negative in the other quadrants, or you can use this handy little mnemonic. There's several phrases that people fill in here, but the one that I know is all students take calculus. Maybe you're not taking calculus yet. Maybe you are, and then I, that's why you're here, because you forgot your trig from last year. But all students take calculus. So this A means that all 
of the trig functions, or, or three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent are positive here. Here, sine is positive. Here, tangent is positive. Here, cosine is positive. So if it's not marked as being positive, that means it's negative. So that is an easy way to remember without having to actually really think through why things are positive or negative where they are. Now let's get to the type of test question where this becomes important. And this is a really common ACT test prep question, which is why I've spent all this time getting to this point. So if we saw a question like this, if the value of cosine theta equals negative 0.385, which of the following is true about theta? I only have four answer choices here, not five, because I ran out of room. But you get the idea. So we're going to see these ranges here, and it's like, ah, what does that mean? It's so intimidating. But if you remember where things are positive or negative, that is the big trick to remember that's going to help you narrow things down. So back to all students take calculus. Now, we know the cosine is negative, so that means it can't be in quadrant four, the angle can't be in quadrant four, and it can't be in quadrant one, so it has to be between two and three. So answer choice A here says zero to pi over six. Well, pi over six would be in quadrant one. Remember that x-axis is pi over two, so this would be smaller than that, so we can eliminate that one. This one would also be in quadrant one, so we can eliminate that, but C is, I turn you in a circle, actually covers the full range of quadrant two and three, which is where cosine is negative, and D, that would be in quadrant, oh, that is supposed to be two pi there. Yeah. Oh, that didn't right now. Two pi over three to two pi, so that would be in quadrant four, and so we can eliminate that one because that would be in quadrant four where cosine would be positive. So we can eliminate all these three things, and our answer is C. So it's an example of a question that looks kind of intimidating, but actually isn't as long as you know the positive or negatives, you're going to be able to narrow it down to the answer because the ACT doesn't get super sophisticated with its trig. So in most cases, that's gonna be all you need to know. All right, so that is the unit circle. If there is something that you want to know about how to do on the ACT math test or English or reading or science, and you want to let us know what that question is, you can tell us in the comments and we will try to feature it in a future episode of Tuesday CT. But regardless, I will see you here next Tuesday for some more ACT tips.